let the real deal now. Gonna kick this sorry ass out on the street. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to week number 42 of the Lowdown Show Brand Wars on the Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We are your Canadian based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night SmackDown from the past week. Also, during the show, we will have our not debuting new segment yet. <laughs> still in the works, ladies and gentlemen, still in the works. Uh, but we do have our segment WWE Headlines where there's not really that much important news today, but that will tie into our Royal Rumble predictions. Every week, the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live on Spreaker at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP. Or you can go ahead and download it on all Android and Apple devices. Spreaker does have an app, so go check it out, ladies and gentlemen. After we are done, it is recorded for your listening enjoyment on full on Spreaker and on YouTube. So go check us out wherever it's easier and convenient for you to listen to us. If you'd like to join on the conversation, have your thoughts, questions read on and discussed on the podcast, tweet us in the holes bar WP. Also by following us on YouTube, subscribing to us on YouTube, and dropping a comment on there. I am your host. The self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, and every week I'm continuing to be joined, except for last week, by my co-host, the blissful boss, Mr. Corporate himself, Corporate Cappy. I'm back. He's back. Don't got a don't got a hashtag beat Corporate Cappy up. No, apparently is, that, that's become one of our official hashtags lately too. Well, not no. lately. It started all with uh, King Scampoli, which that I don't sucks. I don't even know what his name is anymore. The hashtag sucks. <laughs> It's like it's, pr- it's like print something. I don't even know what it is. <laughs> like, well, what's King Scampoli's like? I want to know his new know, YouTube tag. His new YouTube name sucks. Oh, <laughs> is this, this is what is going on? This is just bitterness. What, what, you, know, you don't like it? It's a funny hashtag. Our boy Tony Mercer said it this week. Well, okay. that's because you chirped him. I mean, you can't really blame him for that. <laughs> I don't care. I'm excited about all the stuff I got this week. Yeah, um, boxings and stuff. Yeah, we've had a busy week on the channel this week. A lot of YouTube videos, guys. If you haven't seen them, go check them out. A lot of yeah. unboxing. And of, I did uh, one that I couldn't wait for off channel. I yeah. got uh, Survivor Series DVD, TLC DVD, and yeah. uh, the Sasha Christmas sweater, which was on blow-up yeah. clearance. And that's uh, the ugly Christmas sweater. It is so, beautiful. But it's beautiful. <laughs> it's not really ugly. <laughs> and happy birthday to Sasha Banks yesterday. Yeah, there happy uh, belated birthday to her. So, guys, we'll get into it. We'll just start off. We we'll get, get into tweets. it. We'll get to it. God, Jericho's so good. I just want to say, like, Jericho, man, like, people don't like, I know people give him credit. Like, he, he's definitely the best work he's done in a while. But man, I just, I give so much respect to the guy. What he can do now, at this point in his career, and still get fucking over with the crowd, you know, he's the GOAT. He's he literally, literally the GOAT. Undisputed. And I, I, I had someone tweet at me, or uh, not tweet at me, uh, talk, text me today, um, saying that he, it should be Jericho. And I'm like, you know what? I don't agree with you, but WWE is not going in that route. But I do agree. Like, Jericho should win it. Like, he deserves it. Yeah, man. but he's not going to be a long term plan because he's leaving no. after WrestleMania. So, And he also said that Kevin Owens and, and uh, Jericho should be main eventing WrestleMania for the Universal title. He said you can build such a great story behind that. You could. But it won't happen. No, nope. Vince it's wants boner for Roman Vince, Reigns. Unless your name's Roman Reigns. No man gains. Or Shea Moose. Shame. You You're not getting Sheamus. jack shot. You, you, you don't want Chris Jericho. You want Sheamus. Anyways, uh, you want Roman Reigns. Oh, yeah. I love me my Roman Reigns. Royal Rumble week. Doesn't yep. feel like it, though. No, I know. What is it? Two days away? Is it Friday? Yes. On yeah. Sunday. Can't wait. The biggest one in how long? <laughs> Ever since I've watched. Yeah. I can't think of a bigger Rumble than we're about to see. There's so many unpredictable people this year. Like, there's... Literally more than a handful of people that could win it. And that's what I like about the Royal Rumble. WWE did a good job finally. It's not predictable as fuck. Like the last eight years it's done they've done it. Like <laughs> No Man Gains and Triple H. God. Well I mean I can't say the Batista. last ten years I and mean, your boy was in one of them. So I'd say the last three are predictable. Triple H, Roman Reigns, and Batista. Yeah, that was pretty bad. The Batista one was really bad. Like <laughs> extremely bad. <laughs> That was way too predictable. And we got predict- unpredictability with guys if they're going to sign with WWE or not or have a match or what. Yeah. If they're going to be surprise entrance, we'll see. Rumble is going to be good. And we got uh, NXT TakeOver tomorrow night, which I'm missing. It's that fucking corporate work tomorrow. And I couldn't get out of it. I couldn't try to switch for a day shift, but I'll catch a recording at 12. You suck. I'm turning all my you notifications suck. tomorrow night. 
all of them. I am you not getting suck. anything. You guys can tweet at me all you want. I'm not. I'm having. I'm having them off. I'm gonna watch it as soon as I get home. I don't want to be spoiled by Twitter. Yeah. So I'll, I'll DVR <laughs> that shit and then I'm gonna watch it when I get home. Um. So we'll get into it. Yeah. Let's get into it. Getting your tweets out there. We got a lot of tweets this week. Thank you as always, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate the love. We got into the raw tweets. We'll start off with the Green Bay fan Tony Mercer. <laughs> I recram why not. He puts Raw wasn't a good show, but it did have some positive points. That Zayn and Rollins match was pay per view quality was a smart sur- swerve. The last segment of my, was my childhood in a ring at once. I popped for it. Still entirely too much filler. I'd give it a four point seven five out of ten. Mm. That's a good rating. That's like a it's almost as amount of points that Green Bay got in that game. Oh my god! Sorry, last one. God, Tony. Okay, I, I don't care what. I'll retweet anything, anything fired back there. I like I like this Twitter war between Tony Mercer here and Cobra Cappy. Anyways, move on. Uh, that guy, Greg, at Greg Messi on Twitter, he puts, great way to end the show. That's about it. Really loved the new day, but didn't like the segment. Also, go away, Titus. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? Uh, Greg. Oh. It was funny at first. Now it's boring. Great match by Seth and Sammy. Six out of ten. Hmm. Six is still kind of high for Monday Night Raw. Yeah, <laughs> especially this 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 Raw. You know, if you can call that a show. Greg's being glor- generous, Greg. This week, being generous, Greg. Uh, we got. Oh, that's not glorious. This is Craig. As in, oh, uh, Craig Messi. That Craig guy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> not Greg. That's so okay. confusing. That. Anyways, Casey Salvis, but boring show. Nothing important happened until the last segment. Rather watch a Colorado Avalanche game than this garbage. <laughs> oh, that's pretty bad, man. <laughs> Woo! What a chirp. And this comes from him, who's a Montreal fan. And I, those guys, they're, they're hard chirpers. Um, <laughs> I was yeah. waiting for his rot. Did he say anything about Roman Reigns? No, he didn't. Wow. Uh, wait, do I have another tweet by him? I do. At least, or at least Braun Strowman looked dominant. Two out of ten. <laughs> He posted this video here. Let's see if I can play it with the sound. Okay, then. What is this? Is that Braun Strowman's <laughs> child? Is that what a is that? doppelganger? The guy almost looks like Braun Strowman, but with... <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to pretend I forgot about that. <laughs> uh, next set of tweets comes from Irrelevance. He puts, uh, uh, where is it? There we go. Zane and Rollins, great match. <laughs> My boy Braun destroying Enzo. And the stare down at the end, good they didn't give away the brawl because it was, if, because if you was, if they did. Oh my God, irrelevance. You need to start wording your tweets better, man. I'm getting ultra confused <laughs> here. Because if you was mad, they didn't. Then that means you wanted it. If you want it, then you have to see the rumble. So three out of ten because Zayn Rollins. Many questions from that match. What will Rollins' role be in the rumble? The ending. Oh, and Raw was not Raw not ending in a typical boring. Every person in the locker room just coming out to brawl. That shit is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. They think, I'm glad they didn't do that again. Yep. Uh, next set of tweets comes from Colin at Gamma Nu One. Raw was eh. Jericho is still champ, and Paul Heyman was on, so I was happy. Plain and simple. That's it. Uh, next set of tweets comes from Tyler Jones, at Tyler Jones 22 Raw. He put hashtag Monday Night Snooze Fest. Was snoozy as usual. <laughs> Zayn Rollins was the best thing on Raw in months, and Taker at the end was cool. 5 out of 10. Oh, and not enough hashtag... I can't do it. I fucking don't want to do we, that. We gotta get him. Uh, we gotta the get the, the sound bit. Roar, okay, I'll get the sound bit anymore. for next show. Yeah. Uh, next set of tweets comes from Glorious Greg. Raw gets a one out of ten. Hashtag dumpster fire. Hashtag Monday night nap time. Hashtag main event old main event old timers. <laughs> it was cool to see Goldberg and Taker. That's about it. Raw was just a shit show all in all. Hashtag fix raw. Sometimes I wish raw would be taped. <laughs> Never mind. He's anti generous, Greg. <laughs> anti generous, Greg. Oh, and our last set of raw tweets comes from you. You love so good to me. Oh. 
That's right. It comes from at Real Michael Chow with that great interest theme. And guys, if you're wondering why at Real Michael Chow has his own interest theme, it's because he won our 2016 NHBWP Slammer Twitter Fan of the Year. And if you would like to have your own interest theme to read your tweets out there, all you got to do is win Twitter Fan of the Year. That's it. That's all you got to do, All you got to do. Yeah, that's it. Um, yeah. Uh, that's pretty much it. Yeah, go win, just win, compete. <laughs> Set up some funny tweets. We Set all decide that gifts, we take everything and account for throughout the entire year. And if you are one of our fans, then you just made the list. Then you just made the list. All right, so we just got an incoming text here from Tyler Jones saying thank you, thank you for that, and uh, you're welcome, Tyler Jones, for giving you that roar. We'll get the we, sound we, bit we for you. Can't next do it week. as good as bronze. No, so. we can't. He's a master at that. Anyways. Let's move on. Michael Chow puts two out of ten would have been a one if it wasn't for that Seth and Zayn, <laughs> Seth and Sami Zayn match. Hashtag dumpster fire. Hashtag Monday night nap time. Hashtag the worst of Monday series. <laughs> and hashtag the dummy brand show. <laughs> <laughs> the dummy brand. So Raw's women's division gets a jobber match and the champ only appears in a bad taped promo on a three hour go home show. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Pros, Rollins versus Sammy fight forever, please. The ring lighting, JoJo, the guy selling popcorn in the crowd, couldn't think of any more pros. <laughs> Cons everything in that ending. Between the steroid guy, dead biker guy, and <laughs> and got beat up by a door guy. Just a stare down. Really? <laughs> Hashtag part-time ending. <laughs> That's typical Raw, though. Yeah. It's, what do you want them to do? It's Raw. They did leave you... Uh, you can't even say you leave them on a cliffhanger. They leave you on a, a what the fuck hanger. Like what the hell did I just see? Because it quickly went off the air. Like it yeah. didn't even like give them like a like a long stare down. Yeah, and it then just went off the air. All, all the all the freaking uh, the sound for uh, or not the sound. Sorry, all the videos after it circulated around Twitter uh, about what happened after. And literally, they just each walked out of the ring, left Taker in it, and he did his stare down. Or he did his, uh, his, uh, his pose in the ring. That was it. Um, question for Michael Chow. He puts thoughts about Rollins out of the rumble. I predict Rollins will attack someone and steal their number into the match. Hashtag architect of the rumble. Mm, no. I'm sorry. I don't see him being in the rumble. Nope. I see him getting... Actually, you know what? It's, this is, Vince wants this Royal Rumble to be huge. Okay, he's all jacked up about being in a sixty thousand. He loves his sixty thousand seat arenas, man. It's, just, it's such a perfect place to try <laughs> to get Roman about Reigns the over. Money. It's all about the money. All about the money. <laughs> Anyways, um, he's gonna want to do something big, and I guarantee you, Rollins is backstage and he gets jumped by Triple H in like his street clothes attire, his jeans, his you know his tight ass fucking new shirt. Or he finds a way to get in the Rumble and his Titan Tron hits, but then yeah, he never comes. He gets out. eliminated. Or, yeah, like yeah, yeah. It's it, setting up the like like Undertaker and Kane of two thousand three, like kind of like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that's what's gonna happen, Michael Chow. Other than that, I don't think he's gonna steal someone. <laughs> I don't know how he'll get into it. He'll get into it if it happens that way. Boy, Tyler Jones just said. uh... In the words of Jack Eichel, Michael Chow, I'm coming for you for that Twitter fan of the year. Oh, my God. There so let's go, get in some Chow. more tweets. SmackDown, the blue brand, the A show. Those tweets. SmackDown really is the A show, so Monday Night Dumpster Fire better recognize. I think SmackDown will have better showing at uh, have a better showing at the Rumble compared to Raw. With a huge brawl, unlike Raw and SmackDown, or unlike Raw, and SmackDown gets a 9 out of 10 this week. And I'm hyped for the Rumble match and Cena and Styles. Uh, I also put another good show by SmackDown. I really enjoyed the opening match between Harper and Orton. Also, Mickey James and Becky Lynch getting into a brawl with Alexa coming to help out. Mickey was awesome. And the main event was fun. I'm glad SmackDown ended with a huge brawl. Unlike her. Okay, that, I read that backwards again. So we gave Raw a 9 out of 10. Okay, thank you, Glorious Gregs, for your tweet. I don't know why Twitter organizes the tweets that way. Okay, I'm sorry, guys. I don't know why Twitter does that. Um, Tony Mercer puts SmackDown was a good show. Once again, I say the same thing every week, but SmackDown is the is that consistent. 7 out of 10 this week. I think SmackDown can run the table. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm not even going to go there. That guy, Craig, puts my thoughts. It Oh, my thoughts. It was better than Raw. 
Corbin is on fire right now and didn't like him at first, but he has won me over. There you go. Mm. Yes. I'm glad he's winning people over. I've, I'm a day one Corbin fan here, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm glad he's finally getting a shot. He looks like a future WWE champion. I'm loving he's getting his... Uh, WWE loves his their homegrown talent. It's inevitable. He's going to get a title match or a, even a title run. So we'll see. Um, I'm glad he's getting over with people as well. Um, also, he also put also JBL versus Ziggler, maybe? <laughs> God, that'd be a fucked up match. JBL is not in ring shape anymore. <laughs> Come on. Well... I think he's skinny. Like he lost weight, but I don't think he's in ring shape. I mean, you can be skinny and still be out of shape. Um, cool. Irrelevance puts, good show. Not everything sold me. The main event was, MA ending was a huge brawl. Why? Because the Rumble is Sunday. Well, fuck that. <laughs> Give me something better than a brawl. <laughs> but Corbin looked great, as he should. I hate that Dean is still IC champ, because why take it off Miz? So fuck Dean. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, and also that Carmella in Ja. Never mind. I won't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's leave it at that. All it, all it did was make me want to skip ahead. Overall, a good show. Six out of ten. Best thing was that Styles seen a segment that was absolutely fire. And Battle Royal only pissed, pissed me off more. My boy Breeze. So sad. The tag team division is really looking poor. And I hope it picks up in a big way. Uh, overly solid show. Fuck Roman Reigns and yeah, and Ellsworth too needs to get off my TV. <laughs> <laughs> and he puts, I can't even do the sound irrelevance because we we say we're gonna get the sound bit next week. But it's and one more thing, Braun. <laughs> that is all. Why is everyone getting, everyone's getting on the Braun train here? Tyler Jones gonna be happy about that. Oh, um, great. Casey Salvas puts awesome show. The main event was great. Every segment has a purpose, unlike Raw. 10 out of 10 for the A show. Wow. <laughs> wow, a 10 out of 10. You give the Ellsworth and Carmella thing a 10 out of 10? Yeah, that's uh, it's something more I have to talk about. Um, Colin and Gamma, or Colin Gamma anyone puts A. I'm happy Dean is icy champ still, and Mickey is there. No winner. Mickey is there. No winner because SmackDown didn't have an actual women's match. Oh. Wow, it's a big criticism there. Uh, some SmackDown tweets from Tyler Jones. He put, only watched a review of SmackDown because I was watching Cappy's Sabres come back to beat my Preds. God. But it looked pretty good as usual. Mickey is such a MILF. <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> Happy for Mojo. <laughs> Why it's her fucked. And I'm glad Ambrose getting a run. No rating since I couldn't fully watch it. And my Rumble pick, God, I want it to be Braun, and it could. But after how Zayn got his spot and Steph keeps going at him, he wins. Even though I told Kyle he was uh, dumb for that pick. <laughs> well, I can't take all the credit because D- Cappy did take that pick uh, months and months ago. But Thank then you. He changed it, and I, you know, I picked Zayn and stuck with it. <laughs> but you know, you never know. Like it's so. I love how unpredictable this Sunday is going to be. But you know what? I'm still sticking. Which I'll get into the. Re- predictions yeah, you have to, yeah look at that you have to wait for the <laughs> predictions at the end yeah um last set of smackdown tweets michael chow puts 9.9 out of 10 sorry but that no worth ellsworth and babe mella segment stretched way too long <laughs> i'll have to agree and we'll talk about that later smackdown live is so much more better than raw it's just sad now uh pros smackdown lives women's champ actually appeared live twice compared to raws and smackdown's lives ended their show with actually wrestling compared to raws with a clap emoji cons james ellis and carmella going shopping the movie <laughs> probably the worst out of studios project since triple h's the chaperone just like yours <laughs> uh <laughs> God. Uh, question. Who is your favorite Royal Rumble surprise entrant? Mine was is any woman entrant and Snuka Piper 08. <laughs> Oof. Uh, I think Booker T's return. His, was th- that was the gift he put on that tweet. He put the, the Booker T. I uh, think because I told him for his show that that was going to be my favorite. Mm. God, my um, surprise entrant. <laughs> God. AJ Styles is a surprise yeah, that's, that's a good one. Um, surprise entry. I think uh, one would have to be Goldust. That one year with Cody Rhodes was in the ring waiting. That was a pretty good one. Uh, the crowd really popped for that. So Godfather came out for like one second. Yeah. <laughs> God. Uh, 
But yeah, I, I, it's Gauntlet. a hard hard thing to think about. But I think I just go with Golda Styles. Edge, Edge was when a good he came surprise. Back and won it. Cena when he came back and won it. That was huge. That was uh, I think that was 2008 as well. That was really really big because he was supposed to be out for like three or four months after that. So, John Cena, he's always the king of recovery. He yeah, comes back somehow. way too early. I don't even know what to say about that. Fuck John Cena, man. Just fuck him. Like, <laughs> beat up John Cena. Yeah, beat up John Cena. <laughs> I, oh, my God. I hate him. I can't say. He's cringing right now saying his name. Oh, you're going to get his new merch that came out this week? He got brand new everything. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, I am going to put it right in the credit card. Slap it down. Let me get that John Cena merch. You Speaking know, let me spend $150. Speaking of hot garbage, let's get into the Raw review. Yeah. So, Raw. Yeah, still sucks. What else is fucking new? <laughs> Every goddamn week. This week though was slightly, and I'm, I'm, u- I'm using that word. Ugh, I can't even. Slightly. Slightly. I wouldn't even say it's slightly. It, it, by like one percent, it's better than any other week it's been. <laughs> so it was better, but not by much. Cruiserweights need to stay the fuck away from Raw. Completely need to get the fuck off Raw. Because it's just getting really bad. Like, it's getting dry. They're getting, like, four total minutes a night out of a three-hour show. It just needs to it, stay it, away. Just stay the fuck away. It's taking away what they're doing on 205 Live. Like, it, when I see what happens on 205 Live, I'm like, what the fuck? Where did this come from? He did not. He wasn't this way on Raw. I'm like, who the fuck's this guy? Why didn't they, you know, introduce him on Raw and get us hype for him? No. Like, I just don't. Just, just, it doesn't make sense, man. Keep the fucking Cruiserweights off of Raw. Put them on Thursday night. Put them in uh, Full Sail University. They'll appreciate that and we'll actually get a good show. But no, continue to have it after SmackDown, after half the crowd's already gone. That makes sense. Like, And everyone's just dead tired from how good SmackDown was. And I don't blame them. Um, getting into the Rumble makes uh, no sense anymore. Like, I'm, I'm like your I spot, Nick. Two weeks ago, how come some guys have to qualify and then some other guys are like, oh, I'm in the Rumble? Like what? Did no one backstage think that this was a bad idea, or is like, oh man, this is way too confusing. We shouldn't produce this. Did Vince and Dunn just go? Oh no, no, we're gonna we're, we're gonna do this. You know, he's gonna say he's gonna have to compete, and then this guy's just gonna come out and say, yeah, you're in the Rumble. That makes more sense. No, it doesn't fucking make any sense. Like, man. how did all three members of the New Day get in, but Seth Rollins has to fight Sami Zayn to get in? Yeah, or Sami Zayn had to fight his way in, or Titus had to fight his way in. Guy does so much for the fucking WWE, but no, we're going to make him fight his yeah. way into the Rumble. And he give, still doesn't get into I'll it. I'll give Titus credit. He was the only one that actually tried to earn his spot in the Rumble, not just, I am in the Royal Rumble. And then what happened on SmackDown this week? What do we have? A Battle Royal to get a spot in the Rumble. Why the fuck did we not have that for like the last three weeks or a tournament? I don't understand. Or, or beat the clock challenge. Matches. Something. I don't understand. You can't have half the roster get in on it like just by giving it to them and half the roster have to earn it. It's just a clusterfuck. It doesn't make any like sense. Like, how did Goldberg, Brock Lesnar, Undertaker qualify? Please tell me how they qualified for the match. <laughs> oh, it just didn't make... It just, this whole getting into the Rumble, they need to fix that next year because it really just it's made zero sense. It is what it is. It's, it's a, and it's a hashtag dumpster fire. Tweet, tweet of the podcast. Now, that's not just Raw. That's SmackDown too, guys. Figure it out. Yeah. One other thing I want to point out here. What the fuck does Vince McMahon see in Roman Reigns? I want to know. <laughs> this fucking guy is so bad and it was so it's so stiff. Like he has no. Did anyone wa- listen to him fucking talk this in the week? Opening segment. Oh. Did anyone fucking listen to him talk this week? Let's get into that. It was just fucking cringe. Like he is so bad on the mic. I'm listening to this guy. I'm going, oh my god. Is the cue card hiding on camera here? Is he fucking holding it, like, under his vest? Where the fuck? It just didn't sound right. He just sounds like a complete robot. I am Robin Reigns. I'm going to destroy Kevin Owens. I am the guy. Like, I don't fucking know what what's happening here. What the fuck does Vince see in this guy? Apparently what is so good look. about him? Why does he have to be the poster person? He sucks. He flat out sucks. Because he's he just, the guy. He doesn't give a fuck. He doesn't give a fuck about anything. I, I just... Uh. It's going to happen. Roman Reigns is inevitably the guy that Vince wants to push as the next top baby face. He is so company. stiff. It, it's so bad. <laughs> I, I just... Well, that opening segment this week, after he stopped talking when Chris and, Jer- Chris and uh, Kevin came out, I'm like, oh my god. What? Why? What does what does Vince tell me right now? 
what makes me want to stay and keep watching after that fucking thing? After that imbecile talking. How is he the future of wrestling? I don't know. How? But he's going to win the title from Owens. I mean, it's inevitable. They made him drop the U.S. title in a, in a two-on-one handicap match because it's the only way he could lose to Jericho. God. So Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho come out. Uh, Jericho says that he could beat uh, Roman Reigns basically in a rematch whenever you want to. Uh, Y2J ends up saying, or in Roman's like, oh, so what? You're challenging me into a rematch? Is that what you're saying? I never said that. Yeah. Y2J basically says no. Uh, Kevin then, like, basically puts Jericho into the match and says, no, that's a good idea. You're Chris Jericho. You can do anything you want. Yeah, you can do it. You can be Roman Reigns. Basically throwing his partner under the bus. Jericho's going, what the fuck, man? Like, I'm going to be in a shark cage on Sunday. Now you're going to make me lose the U.S. title maybe this week? <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> um, then it was just the end of a, like the most boring ass segment and opening of Raw. <laughs> like I know we didn't get the clusterfuck opening we've had for like, the last three weeks, but that was even worse. And then you had Cleveland. Sorry, yeah, look asleep. how boring. See, look at Cleveland's boring. I'm falling asleep <laughs> listening to about Roman Reigns on the mic. <laughs> Cleveland cheers for this match. Why yeah. would you want to see this again? I don't understand. You're telling me you couldn't come up with anything new. <laughs> You're like, oh, well, the last this. four weeks. You've what should we do? Match. Oh, no, we should do fucking Kevin o- or uh, Jer- Chris Jericho versus Roman Reigns again. Oh, yeah. Oh, fuck. You're we haven't done that before. Find any other combination possible for a match. <laughs> Heaven forbid you have, like, Chris Jericho face Rusev. I know it doesn't really make sense, but Rusev's not fucking doing anything right now. Well, Rusev could have faced Roman as, like, a... A, like a test match. or something like include someone else that's not doing anything right now because Ross three hours there's lots of people standing around the back doing fuck all right now grab someone throw them out there and you know have Jericho interfere cause Roman Reigns to lose psych him out have Kevin Owens come out and beat the fuck out of Roman Reigns for Sunday why I know it, they kind of did that in the main event with Jericho where it wasn't the main event um with Jericho but why the fuck didn't they do that like I just don't understand the, the mindset backstage and I don't know who the fuck writes this garbage. I know Kevin Dunn has something to do with it, and Vince has something to do with it, but I don't know who the lead writer is. But he fucking makes zero... He really is that dumb? And he's scrambling around, probably fucking papers flying everywhere. I don't know what to do. Jericho and Roman Reigns. Yeah, let's go. And Dunn and Vince don't give a fuck as long as the name Roman Reigns is there. They'll fucking say, yeah, all right, let's go. Let's go with that. Roman Reigns, yep, he wins. See, Roman Reigns, when we talk about him, it makes Kyle drop F-bombs every two seconds. When we talk about Roman Reigns. He, he makes me mad. He makes me very, <laughs> very angry. Anyways. Can we just move on? Yeah, move on. Uh, we got Cesaro versus Luke Gallows. Um, this feud's not bad. Yeah, we had people with uh, tell us hate about why aren't they uh, in a tag team match, but can't really have a tag team match, the same one every week. You got to change it up a little bit. So we had the four different combinations of these two. Yeah. Um so I did write down here, heaven forbid they have a tag team match, but I kind of realized now like they can't really do that every goddamn week. So Cesaro and Sheamus actually uh, look good with the titles, though. Uh, they're growing on me a lot. They look really sick with those red belts. Uh, I wouldn't mind if they kept, it up, kept them on them for a while. It I just could- looks like Cesaro is that perfect tag team partner. Whoever, like, tags with him is automatically... They all made look good. Tyson Kidd. A.K.A. Tyson Kidd, yeah. So yeah Tyson Kidd was good yeah. on his own, but... Um, I don't know. I, I like the chemistry between these two teams. Yeah. I think it's pretty good. Yeah, and it was a decent match. We had Gallows win, too, with the Luke Gallows polls <laughs> that Michael Cole forgot to say. It's like, oh, Gallows with a, oh, I mean, what a maneuver. And then oh. one, two, three. <laughs> what a maneuver. Is Vince telling him to say that? <laughs> yeah, so, why did he say the Luke Gallows poll? We were waiting for that, too. We are like, oh, why didn't he say it? <laughs> oh, well, Luke Gallows wins. Makes yeah. him look strong going into the title match. Yeah. <laughs> Which is on the pre-show. Yeah, so this tag team match is on the pre-show for the titles. The fuck is this on the pre-show for? Then we uh, oh, there's something else that's in the main card that should be on the pre-show. I forget what it is. No, the, we're getting, no offense, but the women's match. Yeah, that six that, women that tag. Six women tag should. Why? Be in what the is pre-show. that? Why is that relevant to be on the main show? I don't know. You just had Cesaro and Sheamus break the New Day's longest streak ever of holding the titles, and then you have. The next title match. And you have them face the club, which are another dominant team. Well, were. Were. There and should be a have dominant them face team. face them on the pre-show. Like, why am I going to give a crap about a match that's on the pre-show? It's just... I next. Anyways, backstage segment. We got Mick Foley on the phone with Steffi McMahon. Oh, this was... Uh, Sami Zayn comes in to interrupt. Says, uh, what does he have to do around here to get in the realm? Because everyone just seems to be 
coming out, basically pointing out that everyone just seems to be coming and saying, oh, yeah, I'm in the Rumble. So Zayn's like, oh, where do I have to sign a piece of paper saying I'm in the Rumble or what? Um, Stephanie thinks that he should compete for it and work for it instead, even though Foley was going to let him do that and say that he was going to be in the Rumble. So looks like there's more tension between Foley and Stephanie there. Um, but yeah, makes sense, you know, because Sami Zayn has to work for it, right, Steph? Even though half your your people, your roster on Raw, have just come out and said they're in Rumble, and you're like, oh, you're okay with that? Okay. The Sami Zayn has to work for it. Makes sense. Heaven forbid, because you just fed him the Braun Strowman thought, the last month and a half. I thought Steph couldn't sound any more cringe, but on the speakerphone, she's even worse. Ugh. So anyways, fully books Sami Zayn versus Rollins. Um, so there's something, that, something with this match, because Mick Foley had to pick up the phone to listen to Stephanie for a sec. And then, so he finds Seth Rollins in the dressing room. Uh, he, he tells Rollins as per Stephanie McMahon, if he loses his match with Sami Zayn, he must give up his spot to Sami Zayn. So I was like, Oh, holy fuck. So one of the two most talented guys on the roster isn't going to be in the rumble. So at this point I'm going, okay. At first I was like intrigued. Then I thought about some more. I'm like, wait a minute. Why would you do that? These both these guys deserve and should be in the Royal Rumble match. Now you had them face each other for one spot, and now I'm just like I already know who's winning. At that, the match didn't start. I knew who was going to win. It was going to be Sami Zayn because Rollins is going to get uh, put with Triple H at WrestleMania. So why does he need to be in the Royal Rumble? I don't know. Great. Anyways, um, it was a really good match. Seriously though, though they, they gave this to us for free. This pay per view quality match. With and Ra- it sucks. It, it, it's, it's not common for raw to do yeah. that um so th- these guys could have a wrestlemania match i saw a lot of people on twitter going that these guys could face each other at wrestlemania and they wouldn't care they just could be a wrestlemania match and it'd be on real i agree that'd be a sick wrestlemania match this match went on for like what 20 25 minutes? yeah and it was really good a lot of good spots uh close back and forth matchups um, inside the ring spots yeah. at the end of the match we got triple h's music starting the fucking crowd went nuts they even showed that one guy going fucking ballistic <laughs> they they show him like two or three they times. They showing him on the replays too. <laughs> um, but it ended up being a troll job. Sami Zayn wins off the distraction with the roll up. So again, this makes more sense. Rollins setting up irate. Rollins and Triple H. It looks like they're really definitely yeah. uh, going with that match at WrestleMania. I right after the match ran out of the ring. Ran I don't know if stage. I can get behind that fucking match, man. Pedigree versus pedigree, really. <laughs> But it's his it's his old boy that he turned on and was supposed to I be guarantee you I'm telling you right now. You guys disagree or agree with me now. We're seeing the return of the curb stomp at WrestleMania. I hope so. Triple H is gonna get curb stomped one hundred percent. I think it's gonna happen. He, he why does he need to have a pedigree? Like Seth Rollins is good enough, he can come up with his own pedigree. I don't mean like for good, but we're gonna see it at WrestleMania. Hundred percent. Hundred percent we're seeing the curb You're stomp. Right here first. Yeah. Uh, number four, or the next thing after this, uh, got a cruiserweight. So one of the, you know, it was a minute and a half of the six minutes total we got on Raw this week of cruiserweight six action. Six man tag. Yeah, six man tag. We got Drew Gulak, Tony Neat, and uh, Araya Davari versus TJP, Ali Mustafa, Mustafa Ali, Mustafa Ali. Sorry, yeah. and uh, uh, Jack Gallagher. Just, just terrible. Man. I don't even think not the Gallagher match is terrible. Match. It's just terrible that these guys are all get to put get put on Raw to do fuck all for a minute and a half. Cruiserweights cannot. We've said it time and time again. Cruiserweights have to have 10, 15 minute matches. Like I don't even care to review this match. It was like this actually was like probably four minutes. Sorry, <laughs> big difference. Minute and a half to four minutes. Uh, Ali won with this cool. I mean, that's probably the highlight of the entire thing was the reverse 450 splash that guy has. That's such a sick finishing move, and it's so underrated. And the guy like Mustafa Ali is so underrated in the cruiserweight division right now. And it sucks because, you know, he's not going to get that time on Raw. I know Raw is, like, more prime time than 205 Live, but they don't get enough time to be put on prime time. You can't really see what they can do. They're handcuffed as far as their abilities, what they're allowed to do in the ring when they're there. That's like telling someone, oh, you're going to be on the Super Bowl, but you only get 30 seconds out of the entire show they show. They were only going to give you 30 show, seconds. Show TV me what time. you got in 30 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> so bad. Okay. Um, let's move on. So we got another Raw and another clusterfuck massive segment. Um, I don't know why they need to do this shit. Literally, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck this was. The only thing semi-good was the potential feud of Enzo and Cast in the New Day. Okay. So we had the New Day come out. 
uh, just being funny as always. Again, comedic relief. It's what they resort to now. They lost the titles. They're just the comedic relief. Out comes Enzo and Cass. I'm like, okay, something's going on here. Um, I'm like, please, please let these guys feud. Me and you were talking at the same time. We're like, man, they should literally let these guys feud. It'd be the funniest thing ever. We'd be pissing ourselves laughing every week. The amount of mic skill they both have and the amount of <laughs> script we'd see in this feud would be unreal. But nope, nope, we don't get that. They were about to call them soft. And yeah, then... and then fucking Rusev and Jinder Steroid Mahal Juicer come out. Mahal. Juicer Mahal come out. <laughs> oh, fuck sakes. They come out. Followed by Titus O'Neil, and I'm like, oh, fuck, here we go again. <laughs> they just start doing some stupid shit, and are you fucking kidding me? Braun Strowman has to fucking come out. What does Braun, how does Braun Strowman go from being in the main event <laughs> the last three weeks, being scrapped to this fucking monstrosity <laughs> of a segment? I don't know what the fuck this was. <laughs> uh, Braun Strowman goes from kicking Sami Zayn's ass and being in the main event to that, to it being was with just, Titus O'Neil. It was just so crazy. Just led into a tag team match. It was eight man tag. God, and it was just one hell of a cringe of a match. It was just god awful from start to finish. I hate when they do these eight uh, man uh, tags uh, where they put people together that don't shouldn't be together. It just I didn't. I couldn't get into it watching it, man. I was my face was more on my and phone looking at. Twitter. Who do you think was gonna win the match? Of course, <laughs> Braun Strowman was gonna. Yeah, win so the they, match. And it, poor Enzo gets fed to him for this. Oh, was, Enzo was hilarious. He's like, I'm ready to go after him, and he just like goes and just gets absolutely yeah. smashed. Like, oh. Poor guy got squashed by Strowman, but and then we get <laughs> all of a sudden Strowman's <laughs> like in the ring celebrating. Well, well, it's the big show, <sighs> <laughs> the big slow. Oh my god! Everyone on Twitter, <laughs> fuck, this is the best part. Everyone to her. Okay, I can give a guy props for losing weight and getting in shape. But that's all everyone was talking about. Was comparing like pictures from like a year ago. I'm like, man, who gives a fuck? Why would you want to see Big Show come out on TV? Why? I don't care if the guy lost like a 300 pounds. I don't want to see Big Show on TV. It doesn't mean that he's got a crazy improved moveset. <laughs> God, get off my TV, dear lord. So we get Braun Strowman and then Big Show stare down. God, like, who cares? Who gives a shit? <laughs> they stare down and Braun walks away. They make Braun look like a fucking pussy. Sorry. They make him look like a pussy. I use the F word. Whatever. And Braun walks away and that's it. <laughs> Great. Oh, I'm, <laughs> well, I'm so glad I got to watch that on Raw. <laughs> you, you, you made Braun look so bad this week. So bad. Before the Rumble, where he's supposed to be one of the favorites. Yeah, you like put him he's, in an eight-man he's in tag. the top five to win the you Rumble. put him in an eight-man tag with Juicer Mahal and the Titus brand, and then have him walk away from Big Show. You guys, you guys you, you, some people criticize people for saying that Jinder Mahal is juicing. He's not juicing, blah, blah, blah. He's just getting in shape. No, no, no. I dare you to compare Jinder Mahal to like a year ago or whenever he was on TV last to now. But to, and it, you can't get big in that amount of time. He's fucking huge. He's, he's got pulsating veins. Even compared out. to when he, he he first made his way, was it on the, the draft? Yeah, after yeah. the draft, he came back. Yeah, compare the pictures. He is 10 times, but you don't get that big in that amount of time. No. Not naturally. No. So he's, anyways. Maybe he's part-time. He takes <laughs> he some drugs. Take some drugs. Part-time. It's all right. Um, going to move on here to the U.S. title match. Chris Jericho versus Roman Reigns. Or no man gains. And we got a commercial to start the match. <laughs> Just what I need. I don't want ding, 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 to hey, we're gonna, We'll be right back. <laughs> oh, my God. <sighs> Again, another yawn. Uh, Owens was on commentary. Probably the best part of this whole thing was Owens on commentary. He just fucking ripped Byron, uh, Saxon. Byron Saxon apart no wonder you're not a wrestler week. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's such a savage. Like, if you guys missed it, go listen to it. It was awesome. It's better um, than the match. Owens causes the DQ. See, this is what I wanted, but I didn't want to see this part in a match we've seen for like the last three weeks. Um, this, If it was like Roman Reigns against Rusev and then Owens came in and beat the fuck out of uh, Roman Reigns and him and Rusev kicked the crap out of Roman Reigns, you know, something like that, then it would have made more sense. But because this happened, didn't really care for it. Um, Roman Reigns gets put in the shark cage. They lowered it down. But of course, because it's Roman Reigns and Vince doesn't want to see him get, you know, jobbed. He had to make Roman fight back, somehow fight back while he's in the cage. Yep, fought and, out of and, it. And fought out of it, and then put Chris Jericho in it. 
And then, you know, the people backstage somehow listen to him instead of Kevin Owens to raise it up. And they raise it up, and Chris Jericho's, like, hanging off the fucking cage as it's going up. Oh, they put Owens in the cage. Yeah, Jericho's hanging off the cage as yeah. Owens is in the cage going up. And then uh, Roman Reigns <laughs> knocks him off and beats the <laughs> shit. Beats the shit out of Chris Jericho, spears him. Great. Nick Owens is like, no, Chris! Yeah. He's supposed to get scared. God. And then he comes back down, and, and after we come back from commercial... He gets out of it, and, and he like starts, they're... like, flipping his lid, yeah. and they start, like, they start smashing the cage, and they're all pissed off. And, and they're arguing a little bit, I guess, teasing a little bit more deception, more. Kevin Owens reassures Jericho that it's, you know, it's all Roman Reigns' fault. You know, it shouldn't be... I mean, it's all Mick Foley's fault, actually, and he starts to convince Jericho that it's Mick Foley's fault for him even being into that match he shouldn't have been in that match you know yada 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 um oh, gotta make reigns look good yep. two on one number seven her next part here i keep reading the numbers <laughs> nia Jax versus a local jobber wow so goodbye to jobber free mondays it's been a good streak but the, just like the new day streak has been broken this literally lasted 30 seconds. Like, it was so quick. This might be the shortest. This broke Brock Lesnar and Goldberg's squash match record. <laughs> like, Nia Jax didn't even break a sweat. Man. Then she gets on the mic. She says she likes to dedicate her match to your girl, Sasha Banks. Great. Um, Sasha then comes out, and she's nursing the leg injury Terribly. really bad. But I, I, I know, like, maybe she's just excited to finally stop nursing it. Maybe she, like, she knew at the end of the segment she would, you know, surprise Nia. Saying, it's obvious. She doesn't want to do this crap. Yeah, so she, maybe she did that on purpose. <laughs> um, She starts beating the shit out of Nia Jax with the crutch. Like, the crutch like literally breaks. beat it to a point that it breaks. And that hurts, guys. It's, you can't have a fake crutch. Like, that hurts. Um. Then she d- does the double knees to her face on the outside, which was fucking ridiculous, nice. man. It was nice. Yeah, Take look at that. Big Nia Jax. Yeah. But I guess they can say yay for TV time. But other than that, it didn't really, you know. The, 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 Emelina gets more TV time in a promo than needs to. I don't give a fuck about this feud. Yeah, it, it's, it's really bad. It's downgrading Sasha to somebody that's brand new after she was just in a big title, title feud. Yeah. To someone like Nia Jax, who's brand new and still needs a lot of seasoning in the ring, a lot. Yeah. And to have her downgrade to that, it just, I don't know. And we got also a promo saying that these two will face each other at Royal Rumble in the pre show. The other pre show match. Hey, on the pre show, even better. (laughs) I know you'll be excited for that. Sure. Um,. Get another Cruiserweight match, so, you know, there's another minute and a half here. Rich Swan versus Noam, duh. The beautiful Alicia Fox. Alicia Fox? No. <laughs> uh, it looks like uh, Noam Dar and Alicia are official now. Fantastic. Whatever. Great. Don't give a fuck. Um, decent match. Still too short, you know, to showcase anything for these guys. Uh, Swan wins. Great. Fantastic. Uh, calls out Neville. Uh, Deus 2 brawl, sort of. I don't know what the fuck it was. It was just like a really <laughs> shitty cringy brawl and dar tries to come in with neville yeah and, and neville, neville walks away there no, yeah. neville threw no yeah. Dar out of there yeah. so then you guys this is promoting their Royal rumble match because they're gonna face each other for the cruiserweight title at the rumble i'm actually surprised that's not a cr- the pre-show match really really surprised i'm i'm glad it's not yeah i'm but... glad it's not but you know what it's i'm really surprised so we had a cringe worthy backstage segment here oh, the fuck i don't know what the fuck this was it's cedric alexander alicia fox and noam dar here um Alicia screaming. I literally would literally would love to stand right next to a chalkboard, hold my ear right up to it, and hear someone fucking scratch with their long ass nails. Then hear Alicia Fox scream. Cause her screaming is so so bad. <laughs> it it is yeah. Like it makes I your ears hurt. What was this? Like, did we need to have... It was filler. It was, like our tweets say, it's filler. filler. This was garbage filler. Like, this didn't need to happen. I don't know why I didn't just save that for 205, because that way, I, you know, I don't... If I miss 205, I get to miss Alicia Fox screaming, which I would have been happy with. So we get into the main event. It was Goldberg's segment. Um, He was bleeding. And I don't know why he was bleeding, okay? they didn't, I don't know if they showed it on Rod. I don't remember them showing it. But I guess what Goldberg used to do back in the day when he was in his locker room before coming out, he used to smash his head on the lockers, you know, and cause himself to bleed. 
to get pumped up for a match. But I guess he did it so hard this week that he had he hadn't done it in a while. That's why he was fucking up his lines in the beginning of the his segment. He tweeted after saying, like, I'll never be doing that again. I just retired that because I couldn't even remember my lines. Like, it was blurring his vision, and he said that he couldn't remember shit. So He smashed a lot of brain cells this week. I thought it was the pyro, but no, it was him smashing his head in the locker. Why is he allowed to do that with all the, the stuff that's coming over <laughs> the boat concussions now and everything? And they let him do it. He probably did it, and they probably didn't know. They probably had no idea, but they're not going to suspend him. Goldberg's like their biggest draw right now. Him and Brock's feud is like their biggest draw. They're not going to suspend him. Stop uh, smashing your head, man. So after he's done talking, after, you know, uh, botching his lines three times, uh, Paul Heyman comes out. <laughs> uh, he talks about this fantasy matchup in the Rumble matches. He kind of compares people. And then he compares the the, the 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 main one, which is Brock and Goldberg, which is not the main one, because no one gives a fuck about that anymore. Man. After that horrible Survivor Series match, it, it literally went down the toilet. Um, uh, he said it, it could even... He starts talking about <laughs> the potential winners, and it could even be, uh, you know, the beast incarnate Brock Lesnar. And then, wow. Uh, or no, he said it could even be this man. He pointed at the entrance ramp and Brock Lesnar came out. Yeah, I'm like, oh my God, he's Lesnar's actually here. To be there. So Goldberg came out. I'm getting uh, jacked for this. Uh, came out. Yeah, Lesnar came out. Heyman says uh, he will he'd be eliminated by Lesnar. Uh, Goldberg challenges Lesnar to get in the ring. He's, uh, he says, like, he's like, why are you coming Come here, here, boy? boy? <laughs> and he said, oh, he calls him a, uh, a dumbass. Yeah. <laughs> Goldberg gets or Lesnar gets really pissed, circles the ring. Um, finally, hops up on top of the ring and looks like they're gonna have you know they're gonna brawl. Cause he steps into the ring. I'm like, okay, finally, gonna get they're actually gonna brawl each other. We're gonna get some, some security out. Whatever, I don't give a fuck. But they're gonna start brawling each other, and then dong, we get the freaking Undertaker dong. I'm like, oh my god! And my inner twelve year old wrestling kid came out of me so fast. Man, as soon as the lights came back on and seeing the Undertaker there looking like he just came out of a fucking time machine from like 2004. (laughs) And I'm like, oh my God. Like I went ballistic standing there and and just having stare down with both of them. (laughs) Lesnar looked like he just shit his pants. Goldberg just going, yeah, okay, okay. You know, Goldberg looking like a tough motherfucker, you know. And then (laughs) just, oh my God. My inner kid triple went nuts here. Triple Are they teasing a triple threat at WrestleMania? Please don't do that. <laughs> I I hope this is just for this Sunday. Don't no. do a triple threat match, please. <laughs> that is like the worst idea. The, I, I'd want to watch it, but it's like the worst idea possible. But you know what? <laughs> I know people are criticizing that, but then I look at it another way. You're keeping all three of these part-timers out of anyone that... <laughs> Them out of any one of them facing someone who Burying shouldn't be facing a, a part timer. Yeah. <laughs> so if you want to keep them in a triple threat match for WrestleMania, whatever, Fuck, do it. I don't care. <laughs> Just don't make it the main event. <laughs> and I'm compl- applause to Raw for this because uh, yeah. this was great. How they left us off on the cliffhanger. They didn't brawl, which is good. Yeah. It makes you wait and save it for the Rumble. Yeah. You know what I mean? It yeah, gives you that. I agree. Something yeah. to look forward to. Don't I just, my away. inner kid just exploded at that point. I'm like, oh my God. I just wish the stare down would have been, a li- it was like literally 10 seconds. So in a way, hot. which we shouldn't have to wait for it, the three hour wait was worth it, <laughs> which we shouldn't have to wait three hours for something good like that to happen. The um, last 10 seconds yeah. of, the, of the show. So my rating this week, I gave Raw a 5.5. And it's right at the half mark. I gave it to Goldberg segment. Um... Not even a segment, just the end. <laughs> yeah. I gave some points to the Cruiserweights for just being there on Raw. Uh, Kevin Owens beating the shit out of Roman Reigns. Uh, I gave some points to Zayn Rollins, obviously. Cesaro's Sheamus in the club. And yeah, that's it. It added up to 5.5 for me. So I gave 5.5 out of 10. <laughs> so much fucking filler. Oh. If you like the show, I don't know what... Yeah, I'm like. not saying I like it, but I gave him a half rating just because it was slight. Again, like I said in the beginning of the, sh- the our show, it's slightly better. Slightly. Not by a lot, slightly. I'm giving it two and a half. Oh my God. That is it's a low still rating. It fucking sucks. Yeah, I know. It was Monday Night Filler. That's what it was. Seth Rollins, the same For thing. For a go home show, it was really bad. 
Sami Zayn and Rollins gets two points by its on its own, and then the point five goes to the last fifteen seconds of the stare down. That's it. Okay. That's literally it. You could have missed Raw for the last month and a half and wouldn't have missed jack shit yeah. okay. until the last fifteen seconds of the show. I agree. It was Monday Night Filler again, but you know, just I'm giving it some more points. This Solid week. to it. Be, I gave it two last week or the week before. I think, that, it's so just, it, I think I just because I'm a taker. I'm taking the boy. I had to give sure. him some points there. I don't mind. Anyways, that. we'll move on to the A show. The number one brand in our minds, and a lot of you out there, and probably the majority of wrestling fans, except the 5% who are Roman Reigns and Sheamus fans. Um, SmackDown, really good this week. As always, it doesn't even have to fucking try to be a good show every week. They can just put their whole roster out there in a two-hour show, and it would beat Raw within the first 10 minutes of Raw. The way they structure it, it's just a lot better. Yeah, it just... There's only one pointless segment this week, which we went into, uh, but it was de- it's definitely the A show so far. I uh, guess me more into it than Monday Night Raw will ever do. The storylines make sense on SmackDown again, like you said. It's more well structured. There's everything, you know. When a show makes sense from start to finish, you enjoy it. Everything Raw is flows. just everywhere. Yep. Raw looks like you threw a dynamite in there and just boom, just shit just went everywhere. And it they, just they tried piecing it back together with a blindfold on. It flows so much better. So, oh, excuse me. So the opening segment, God, uh, it's backstage. Dan O'Brien in the Miz. Uh, Dan O'Brien's about to chew into a delicious apple. He's re- he looking like a teacher on his first day of school here. Um, Miz interrupts him though. Sad, doesn't get to chew his apple. I was upset. Um, rips into uh, rips on Toledo. I think it's there in Toledo, Ohio this week. Crickets, by the um, way, Toledo, yeah, Ohio. Yeah, they they made the list. I tweeted about it. They did, actually did make the list. Rips on Toledo for being a dump <laughs> of a city. Uh, it's not a place for a Hollywood star like himself should be. Um, he even cut the jokes like, "Where where where's my my superstar dressing room? I don't have any here in this Toledo dump arena." And Dale Ryan's like, "Well, I can go into the the men's urinal and build one for you in there." <laughs> And then Miz is like pretending to laugh back at it. Um, and then uh, Dan O'Brien books, or uh, he's uh, sorry, the Miz wants a, uh, or books an IC title match. So Dan O'Brien books not, yeah, okay, I'm getting this confused. Dan O'Brien just uh, books a IC title match to Miz and Dean Ambrose. Uh, Miz likes it, but he says, how about it should be no disqualification match? Dan O'Brien's like, oh, so Maurice can get involved. Oh, yeah, we're not doing that. Not happening, Miz. Um, then uh, Dan O'Brien books a lumberjack match for the IC title, so people there'll be more people at ringside to join Maurice at ringside. So already a better start to Monday Night Raw or to SmackDown, and it beat Monday Night Raw well out of the water, like just completely destroyed Monday Night Raw's opening segment of boring reigns. Okay, so we move on. We get the whole Wyatt. We got a promo with the whole Wyatt story since it started with uh, since Randy Orton joining to this point. Um, really, really intense feud. I love this feud. Um, the whole implosion of the Wyatt's happening right before our eyes. And this leads into the match, uh, that was so hyped for this week. Randy Orton versus Luke Harper. Loser gets to walk and winner stays, I guess. You know, we, we know what was going to happen after the match. So, uh, they just, just the Wyatt's have to have one of the greatest entrances of all time. Bray Wyatt's entrance is up there, man. It, it, it's so with the added unreal. Randy Orton part side with uh, was, he was Ray not, uh, yeah Bray was at ringside with uh, Sister Abigail. That's what it's called. I completely forgot what the chair was called. Um, even stops a possible count out because uh, Luke Harper was on the outside down for the down for the count, and Bray Wyatt goes over there and grabs him because the rest is about to count to ten and throws Luke Harper in the ring. And says, no, 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 we're not ending the match like that. <laughs> it's great. It's just great. I'm like, all right, this Wouldn't is awesome. Wouldn't have been a disqualification. No, it would have been a count out. And Randy Orton would have won. No, but Bray Wyatt put his hands on Luke Harper. Yeah. Count as a DQ. Yeah, in a way. <laughs> but whatever. Um, really good match after that. A lot of back and forth action here, and then an RKO out of nowhere. Literally, it was fuck. We, you know, it, it's a term that they use all the time, and it looks like they use too much. But this was literally out of nowhere. I did not expect Randy Orton to use an RKO right here. So he broke out an RKO, and he won. Randy Orton won. After the match, uh, we get Bray Wyatt stepping into the ring. I'm like, oh my god, kid, what's going to happen here? Is, is he going to turn on Randy Orton even though he won? No, he grabs Lou Carper into the sister Abigail. And then Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt get to walk out. 
Wow. 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 That's symbolic. Yeah. One um, of his longest reigning Wyatt members. Go, gone, up. I guess. We don't know. And it, again, this right here makes you think, oh my God, what's going to happen? Is something going to happen at the Rumble with Luke Harper? Like something in the Rumble match? Is there going to be more deception? Is 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 Bray going to turn on Randy Orton? Um, no. And, and it leaves you questioning for the following yeah, week on they, SmackDown. He didn't tell you exactly what he was doing. Yeah. So... And this is why, you know what, this is what I'm okay with now. I'm looking at it from the outside here. I know SmackDown doesn't have a lot of weeks to prepare for Elimination Chamber. It's only two weeks after the Royal Rumble. But they have a good enough show to have that much of a gap between Elimination Chamber and WrestleMania to not have another pay-per-view. They don't have to have a pay-per-view to have a good show. They can have the, the, the pay-per-view quality match on SmackDown. Because they give it to us, unlike Raw. Yeah, and it, but it makes more sense on SmackDown. It's just, SmackDown is such a good show from start to finish. I love how good the show is. I wouldn't become. even care if SmackDown didn't even have their own branded pay-per-views. I know. They don't even need them. No, they to don't. To hype their matches. So, after this, we had a promo about the women's cage match last week. Really well done promo, I want to point out. Whoever does the promos for SmackDown, way better than whatever Raw can put together, man. They're just so well done. So much intensity. The music... Uh, the effects they put into it, so good. I love the presentation. Um, we get the Mickey James in ring segment, mm. and again Toledo, you you just made the list. Crickets for her entrance, man. <laughs> they had no idea who the hell Mickey James was. Like no idea. Mickey James, uh, what's it called? The the bear barricade barricade. She hops the barricade yeah. in the corner, um, and. Uh, Be- uh, oh Alexa. 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 I want to say Becky in, Lynch. Alexa, but Alexa comes is there. Four, and just comes nowhere. in, kicks the shit out of Mickey James here. And they go into the ring. Um, and they start kicking the shit out of each other as well. Um, yeah. Becky, uh, Becky Lynch gets <laughs> just gets her ass handed by Mickey James and Alexa. And uh, I forget what Mickey James says to Becky as she's lying there, like motionless. Um, but it was just, th- <sighs> this looks so good. This feud is so good, I'm, and it looks like it's going to branch off for what happened uh, or later on in the night. So it looks like it's going to be Mickey James and Becky Lynch in a feud with each other, and that's I like fantastic. that. So that's going to be three women's feuds. <laughs> Unbelievable. Four if you count Ellsworth. And, uh, yeah. That's not really a woman's <laughs> feud. Oh, God. Anyways, I can see, though, Mickey and Alexa going the whole Trish Stratus and Mickey route later yeah. on down the line. I think that's going to sure. happen Alexa eventually. Alexa would love that since <laughs> Trish was her idol and she gets yeah. to feud with one, one of her of greatest feuds. Greatest yeah. Feuds. So yeah. We'll see. So we'll move on to that. James Ellsworth and Carmella. They go, they, we get a video of them going shopping. This was horrific. This was so bad. Like James Ellsworth trying on like new. I, I can't talk about it because it, it makes me sick. <laughs> trying on stuff. And it sucks because my girl's in it. Like, I don't know where <laughs> this is going. The girl's looking like a total slore right yeah. now. Like, I don't know where this is going. It's just crazy. She had that great feud with Nikki Bella, and then they stick her with Ellsworth. And just, I don't care about this. The, the casuals love this. They're all over this. I just don't yeah. care. And then James Ellsworth comes out with his Carmella gear on. He's yeah. like, oh, you look F-A-B-U-L-O-U-S. Okay, I'm moving on. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Move. Next. You get a battle royal. There you go. Again, something compete for Rumble Spot. We get a battle royal to compete for <laughs> Between one. Between a bunch of jobbers. <laughs> it's like the, the jobber battle royal here. But, uh... It was saved by this. Okay, so that that Ellsworth and Carmella segment was saved by Corbin because right at it ended and then Corbin's entrance starts. I'm like, okay, thank you, Corbin, for fucking saving me for that nonsense. He's on commentary for this for whatever reason. I don't know why. Maybe they just need to come include him onto the show, but he's commentating this battle royal for some reason. Yeah, he's like, wow, look at all the bunch sure. of shit in this ring. Yeah. So we get uh, the vaudeville in the ring. They're vaudevillains. Rhino and Slater, Kurt Hawkins, Ascension, Brazongo, and Mojo Rawley. So basically, it would have been all the tag teams if it wasn't for Zack Ryder. But Zack Ryder got uh, <laughs> replaced, ironically, by Mo- Kurt Hawkins. Who would have knew? Who would have thought, man? An edgehead replaced an edgehead. Sure. Um, <laughs> it was so random. Uh, but competing for a spot in the Rumble makes more sense. I love how SmackDown utilized that. And again, it adds something to uh smackdown and how it's good every goddamn week at least they had to fight for it i mean i, I didn't enjoy yeah. this match at all but no. and mojo won so mojo's gonna get in the rumble so good for the kid you know zach Ryder's injured still he said mojo was a talking on talking smack a few weeks ago how you're gonna see a new mojo raleigh sure okay. hey won a rumble spot look at that 
Uh, we'll move I, on. I well, he's going to drink 18 Red Bulls before he goes out there. <laughs> He'll definitely have the most energy out of anybody. Yeah, that's true. He definitely gave him some sales to Red Bull, that's for sure. Nope. Uh, we'll move on. And uh, this is a really good, again, something, another woman's feud. This was quick, but it was good. This was only 30 seconds long, but it was good. We get shown Nikki Bella arriving at the arena outside talking about uh, how you know how people make fun of her for saying she's only famous because of John Cena. And you see the production, production truck. truck. And she's like, even though right here in the production truck, I'm right next to John Cena on it. <laughs> like, you, you idiot. You just, you just contradicted yourself. Like, you're such a hypocrite. <laughs> God, Nikki, you're so bad. Anyways, the we best get, part was Natty. Yeah, we out. get saved here by Natty coming out and say, "Oh, I don't see my face in that production truck. Where, where's, where's Natty Hart there?" And then she just beats the crap out of Nikki Bella, throws her, throws her the into the truck. fucking production truck, like right underneath her and John. It was fantastic. Oh, I God. loved it. This is only three seconds, but again, it was awesome. But awesome. it actually meant something. Yeah, because this feud has been that crazy and that you know brawlicious, if that makes any and sense. They're, they're doing stuff not just in the ring. We just saw the. What was it? The the merch stand last yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. Now the production truck this week. Like I like that. Mm-hmm. So good on them, even though they were only on for thirty seconds. Nice. So we move on. We get the AJ Styles calling out John Cena segment. Unreal. Like I said before, when these guys get put in the ring and they're given microphones, they just it's just good. John Cena. It's like music to my ears. Both these guys, man. As much as we 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 bash John Cena, he's good on the mic. This week he was really good. He, this was like Attitude Era, you know, or sorry, Ruthless Aggression Era like John Cena here. So it was really good this week. He's, he's got like this cockiness now. Yeah. If, if he continues to talk like this, like he did this week, I will not have a problem with John Cena. As much as I want to say he gets afforded everything and he still does. He's got his brand new t-shirt, brand new wristbands. Yeah, Mike skills man. wise, because he can sell it. It's so, so bad. It's not even him. It's just already he's like, here, we're going to give you a new merch. Go out there and wear it so you can sell more and get more money. Just, you know, oh, sure. I'll get more money. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, as much as he doesn't want to say it's for the money, he you know he loves making money. Everyone loves making money. Don't bullshit. Don't don't believe this bullshit about John Cena doesn't give a shit about the money. He just cares about wrestling. He cares. Okay, he yeah. gets pissed off if he's the number two bre- <laughs> merch seller on WWE.com. Have, have you seen his house on Total Divas where Nikki Bella's not allowed to fucking dirty a dish? Yeah, <laughs> he cares. Okay. Anyways, Styles starts talking about uh, – John Cena's about to say them. He goes, no, you don't get to talk here. <laughs> I, I'm tired of you talking. Yeah. <laughs> Styles is so good. Um, Styles starts talking about um, being screwed out of the poster of, of Royal Rumble. He gets like put at the back and Cena's more ahead. Um, he tells uh, John Cena to come out. Cena is about to start talking. We got that. That's, oh my god Styles just interrupting him there it was hilarious uh, Styles talks about uh, Cena being always being on Today Show and they show the footage of him being on Today Show and they're making fun of this guy from Georgia not even get they don't even mention AJ Styles' name uh, which you know what in a way it did make sense I'm like okay why didn't they actually mention AJ Styles he's like one of the main faces here he's the be. champion yeah but he's like the main he's one of the top guys like if you combine both brands he's he's in the top five He's one of WWE's poster boys, but they didn't make like that was a big snub. I feel AJ like Styles. that was I feel like that was a scripted it probably was. show segment. Yeah, uh, Styles calls Cena a sorry excuse for a wrestler. <laughs> like that's as much as that doesn't sound like a hard diss. That is a really hard diss. Backstage, um, Cena's like, "What are you doing, man?" Yeah, style. <laughs> hey, what are you doing, man? What you... I, I'm a good wrestler. You know, I follow the script, right? <laughs> I talked to you in the match. In ninety percent of the match, John Cena meat loop. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Styles is not settling for a uh, for a man. Uh, he's uh, what? God, I don't even know what I wrote here. <laughs> oh, he's not uh, settling for a match. He's coming for Cena's ass. I don't know. It was something Ooh. really, really weird. I don't know. Cena does fire back here with like decent oh, shots. Yeah. Cena man. was like, better in this promo. He was. It was very, very, very thugonomic. Like I didn't really write down anything he said. There's the whole bad, bad man thing he mentioned. I'm like, oh my god, he's oh, mentioning his, his was, rap album. He yeah. was talking about, uh, you know, I, just because I didn't wrestle in the indies yeah. doesn't mean I'm a good wrestler. I wasn't built for the indies. I was built, built for, for this WWE, moment. Like, WWE to be the top guy. Yeah, I wasn't. Like, I was built for WWE. The, the, to be the WWE. Superstar. The thing is, like, it's, this wasn't scripted, Cena. This this week this was literally from the heart thugonomics yeah, it was Cena. like what people say all the time on uh you know social media where people are like oh he never wrestled in the indies and all this stuff and yeah he was just when they break the fourth wall and are allowed to talk like this 
You're just creating dollar signs, Vince, and you're creating, you're making the IWC, which get mad at you for like 99% of everything you do, you're making them happy. And when you bring up stuff that people are actually talking about and discussing about in podcasts and and tweets and stuff, that's when it makes it more interesting. Like the the poster thing, people were complaining about how AJ AJ Styles is on the back of the poster. Yeah. They they included that in here. They showed the poster on that during the promo and Styles like, yeah, look at me way back there. Yeah. And then the Today Show thing, I guarantee you people were talking about it on Twitter. They probably saw him. Go, what the hell? Why did they just make fun of Styles? They probably quote, like tweeted him and going, "Yo, Styles, did you see this?" Apparently, Road Dog is behind is uh in Korea that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, thank you, Michael Chow, for telling us that it's Road Dog. Wow. So he's incorporating things that we are talking about as yeah. fans, and that's yeah. great. That's great. I love that. It makes it more real, and it makes SmackDown better again. Again, once again, so, another point gr- to add to the list. Great promo at the end, but I feel yeah. like that. I don't know. I feel like they kind of. Didn't give Styles the benefit of the doubt to at least say something at the end. Yeah, Cena kind of just, just mic dropped look, and yeah, left, and then Styles it. just kind of looked at him. But whatever. Other than that, it was a great promo. Um, it's going to be an unreal match. I can't wait for that. It literally could go either way. There's and two then, directions yeah. they could go after this. We don't know which one they're going to go down. There are actually three, but we don't know which one they're going to go down because there's nothing that's hinted at what direction they're going to. So, is it going to be better than their SummerSlam match and won our match of the year? It's tough. WWE? It's going to be really tough. It's going to be up there. It's going to be a really good match. I think it's going to be really, really, really. You think well it'll done. be the main event or the Royal Rumble is going to be the main event? Royal Rumble is actually the main event. I read online today. It's going to be the main event. Well, they um, want to make the the minor the minor card look good, and this match yeah. would be fantastic. So. Yeah. Um, move on we get a no- naomi segment uh, we are doing the unboxing during this <laughs> of our uh, D- our double divas pack um i guess you is- know more about this w- what i got from it is i saw naomi come out she said stuff on the mic alexa confronted her and then alexa ran away after naomi was like challenging her into the ring i went back and watched this after it was funny because alexa said where have you been the last couple months you know you're, you're pretty irrelevant <laughs> and then uh <laughs> <laughs> Naomi's like, yeah, I, I, I want that women's title, and she's like, okay, you can go back into a relevancy now <laughs> oh and leave. So like, I guess this is what the feud's gonna be again. If this is a feud, that's three women's feuds on SmackDown to the one on Raw. And, and Alexa was making fun of Naomi, saying like okay, she's been too. on TV, and they're incorporating stuff that Naomi's yeah. legitimately pissed about on Twitter. So that yeah. they're incorporating that. I love it. I love Alexa SmackDown Bliss, is just so good. Twice, so good. Twice on SmackDown. Twice in like, one night. Ten out of ten. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no other thing I can say. We we'll move on to the main event, which is the tenth thing here. Ironically, ten, <laughs> ten. Oh ten. my god! Of course, it's the IC title match between Miz and Ambrose in a lumberjack match, which is actually a really good match. Uh, good use of the lumberjacks, you know, with the typical lumberjack spots, the people throwing them back in the ring. We had some deception between the lumberjacks because a mix of heels and faces. Oh, God. Um, Miz doing more Daniel Bryan moves. I don't know if this is actually foreshadowing anything or if he just, you know, we know he used to do the Ric Flair moves back in the day. Like he was his mentor and Daniel Bryan is almost like a mentor to the Miz, like, you know, not on camera, but off camera. So... We don't know. I don't know if this is foreshadowing anything, but he's doing a lot of Daniel Bryan stuff. Uh, there's a cool spot where Ambrose jumped literally on everybody, <laughs> <laughs> like uh, typical Dean Ambrose would do. Um, then all the lumberjacks started jumping into the ring and brawling again. Just teased Rumble. A lot of people hate this, but it, it was you knew it was going to happen. Something was going to happen when all the lumberjacks started fighting each other. You got a mix of heels and faces here. They got all in the ring. The match just causes disqualification to everyone's just brawling with each other. <laughs> Um, yeah, it just it's it's Royal Rumble hype, and you know what? I love SmackDown for that. I love start to finish. It. Everything makes sense. So I, I gave SmackDown this week another. I'm gonna give the same rank and give it every week nine point five out of ten. I don't know, it, and it doesn't get the point five again, and because of one thing only, James Ellsworth. I guess it made sense that everyone just didn't come down to the ring for a brawl. They were already yeah, out there for the match, yeah. so it wasn't as bad as it usually is. So I'm gonna give it. An eight this week. Oof. It's still a great rating. Yeah, I know. If if I gave Raw an eight, that would be like the best rating it's ever gotten. (laughs) But I'm going to give it an eight because the Carmelsworth segment was cringe. Yeah. And I didn't really like the battle royale with Mojo Rally. And I thought that was pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, Alexa Bliss twice on the show. I mean, can't get much better than that. Yeah. Uh, Styles and Cena promo was great. Uh, Wyatt match didn't really get to see it. Mickey James segment was good. And I didn't catch the main event or the beginning, so I'm going to give it an 8. Okay. Fair enough. It's a solid 8. So those are raised. And again, SmackDown wins again consecutively on our show because Raw it's, continues to produce dumpster fire. Might as well not even have brand wars anymore. It's yeah, not, might as well just be brand. the lowdown show SmackDown edition. <laughs> SmackDown wins, yeah. LOL. Yeah, might as, well. <laughs> might as well just be. We might as well just revert back to the lowdown show. 
<laughs> oh my god. Anyways, um, so we'll get into the predictions for both. We'll do both shows this weekend: uh, NXT Takeover San Antonio Go and a Royal Rumble match. So. Should we do the break breaking news theme for this? Just just because just because we're not gonna have any news, should we sure, just do the theme? Not? That's the theme. All right, predictions for NXT San Antonio, Takeover San Antonio, and the Royal Rumble. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our predictions for NXT San Antonio. That's what you guys have all been waiting for in Royal Rumble. So. We'll go right into the NXT TakeOver event. TakeOver against awesome. We, we, like, we went to TakeOver Toronto. It was great. So this one doesn't have a lot of the, the hype that NXT TakeOver Toronto had, but it's sort of still you know hype-ish um, just because of what's going to happen. And we're it's, it's curious to see wh- who debuts in the Rumble, who doesn't. Um, it's for NXT, though. I mean, it yeah. should be another great show. They're yeah, not they having always, it at yeah. Alamo Dome, obviously, yeah. but... There's only one match in here which I'm not looking forward to because I don't think it's going to be good at all because they're facing the most stiffest team I've ever seen. We'll talk about it right now. DIY or DIY versus Authors of Pain for the tag team titles. Authors of, hang on. <sighs> Authors of Boar. <sighs> of Yawn. <sighs> they're just, I don't see this match being anywhere good, man. You can't put. Champa and Gargano, Gargano against technical g- wrestlers like that against, against big, big stiff, stiff like giant that. fucking Roman Reigns zombie like characters. I don't even know what they are, and they better not win the titles. I mean, DIY finally got the titles from the revival after two like five star matches in a row. Yeah, I just uh, I don't hope I hope they don't. I just I, I feel bad for DIY because I feel like they're gonna try to do their best against these guys, but these yeah. guys are just such stiffs. I yeah. can't I can't stand either of them. Yeah. I hope this tag team never gets called up. Yeah. So, if I predict I want DIY to win, I won't be surprised if Authors of Pain win. But I'm picking DIY, obviously. Uh, I'm picking DIY because if Authors of Pain win, yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do. So, I don't want to yeah. think about it. So, I'll move on. We'll do the Ty Dillinger versus Eric Young match. Uh, All Canadian matchup Canadians. again. Canadians for the second takeover in a row. Um, I see this being a really good match. Uh, both guys are technical as hell. We saw Eric Young at a uh, House, of Hardcore. House of Hardcore event. He's really, really good. We, we also saw him at TakeOver Toronto in I, the NXT I, I think it's going to be a great match, but I think it's going to be spoiled by Sanity coming out at the end. Yeah, we, it's predictable. It's going to happen. And then this is going to definitely lead in the Dillinger debuting at the Rumble in my prediction. So you think this is Dillinger's last NXT yep. match? So I'm picking Eric Young for the win here. Obviously Eric Young. I mean, yeah. I think he's going to be one of the guys next in line for the title. Yeah, if hopefully Bobby that'd be sick. Win it. Yeah, because especially with Sanity, he's got a he's got a you know backup plan with yeah. him, and yeah. uh, I mean he needs to win more than Dillinger to be honest. Yeah, so I'm picking Eric Young. Yeah. Uh, next match, match I don't really care about because I don't know what the hell is going on here. Andre Cien Almas versus Roderick Strong. I'm picking Strong. Whatever. I th- Strong is his history in the Indies. I think uh, because Triple H loves the indie guys. They're gonna heavy this guy in the future. He's Wasn't gonna be he one the top guy in yeah. ROH. He's gonna be one of the top guys in NXT too as well. So he's an excellent signing by WWE. So you know what? I'm gonna pick him if they if they want to start making this guy look strong. Gotta get start winning. Gotta win some matches. I'm picking Roderick Strong yeah, here. It was like when Nakamura came up. Like he had to face Zayn and he had to face other good wrestlers yeah. before he even got a title yeah. match. So so I'm picking Roderick Strong. I I saw yeah. the. The feud that they had this last week on NXT, CN yeah. almost attacked them backstage. So yeah. it should be an okay match. Yeah. I mean, He's I'm, got a sick finish here. If you guys don't know what it is, go look it on YouTube. It's unreal. I think it'll um, be better than the Authors of Pain match. I'll tell you hopefully. that. Hopefully. Uh, move on to the Fatal 4-Way match for the NXT Women's Championship. Asuka versus Nikki Cross versus Peyton Royce and Billy Kay. Um hmm. So we saw what happened on NXT this week. If you guys didn't see this was it, great. The main event of NXT. We had Peyton Royce and Billy Kay come out together. Very like they look lesbian like, but oh my god, Peyton I don't Royce. Care if they're lesbian. They wow, look. did Peyton Royce ever look good this week? Um, Billy Kay looked decent. They're just talking about how they're gonna you know team up together, and they don't care who's champion. So it's like Team Kevin and Chris, except they're they, gonna they care. Actually. It's gonna come down to it that they're <laughs> they're gonna be both both. It's gonna be like Oscar and Nikki cross on the ground. They're gonna look at each other like we have to brawl for the women's championship. Like they're gonna face each other. They're gonna, and I think their crowd's gonna get a lot behind that. I can kind of see them like the crowd kind of exploding for them when they finally fight each other because these girls have been best friends forever. Um, the Nikki Cross came out this week on NXT after to confront them. She's fucking psycho, man. She's like five foot one, 
one too. She's really, really small. Um, followed by Asuka, and then they uh, Asuka didn't even get an entrance. For no, she, she just ran, ran out to out the there, ring and then started kicking the crap out of people. She had a stare down with Nikki Cross, which is going to be epic. And when they have a stare down this Sunday, it's going the crowd's going to go ballistic <laughs> for that. This is gr- a bunch um, of security guards came out. Yeah, this they, they as much it. of a shit show this looks like, and so like different than what we've been seeing out of the women's title the last two years i like it i think it's gonna be a very very interesting type of match but i still pick oscar going forward it's still nxt women's champion until they finally find that one person that can get really over and it's probably gonna be ember moon to dethrone her later down the line later down the line but it's still oscar's time to run with the title i mean there's no one else even close to her right now she's gonna be like one of the most dominant women nxts ever have 100 percent. and i just want to give a shout out to that ending segment on nxt that was well done yeah nikki cross and and Asuka just kicked the shit out of, like, seven security guards. Yeah, just literally beat the shit out of all of them. And then Nikki Cross jumped on everybody. That was <laughs> and then great. And everyone was just lying so, on the ground. Thumbs up so. to the NXT Women's Division. Yeah, but so we both pick Asuka. Into the main event, really, really, really hyped matchup between the glorious Bobby Roode and Shinsuke Nakamura. For the oh, my title. God, man, for the NXT title. I don't know. I, I, I always have second thoughts with this i've been having second thoughts for the last two weeks now i mean we all we it all can thought... go two ways here it literally could go two ways and people don't see it i'm like yes it can no one thought that nakamura was going to lose to joe at yeah to take over toronto and he did so i i think this could go two ways one okay one way could go that bobby Roo could win here have the nxt championship and then he could be the one for this year to be that guy and nakamura could debut at the rumble and then have a match at wrestlemania against someone Vince wants WrestleMania to beat Wrestle Kingdom out of the water this week, this year. So, what way to do it than bring up Nakamura? I know, but at the same point, you need Nakamura to carry that yeah. brand. You and that's the other way you can go. They could up. still have Nakamura win, uh, retain, but still have an epic classic with Bobby Roode, and then carry the Continue brand it on. Again. Yeah. They can, they're probably going to have another match, maybe yeah. at WrestleMania. And I'm going but to pick Shinsuke Nakamura for the win. Here. As much as I love Bobby Roode and we love his entrance, yeah. we're going to pick him with Nakamura too. I mean, yeah. he's got he's to be the face of NXT. You ha- yeah. it, it's its own brand. You can't call every single guy up that's great because then there's nowhere for people to go. Yeah. And then you have to restock the shelves in NXT, which is hard to do. Yeah, for so sure. I think Nakamura is going to run with the NXT title for a while. Yeah. So. I'm picking Nakamura as well. Um, I think it'll be a great match, though. Yeah. And I can't wait to see Bobby Roode's entrance this time. God. In the, uh, I won't be in the Alamo Dome, but it would be cool to what, yeah. what they incorporate. The crowds are time. just crazy for his entrance. Yeah, I was going to see how they do it. We had the uh, the choir for NXT Toronto. And Can Shinsuke it, had all the violinists yeah, in the so ring. So we'll see. Should be a great match. Yeah. Great main event. So move on to the Royal Rumble review. review. And we'll get off with the kickoff. Preview. Kick- yeah, the preview. Sorry, we'll start off with the kickoff matches. We get... We're including one in the kickoff match, even though it's not. But uh, we'll get Alexa Bliss, Mickey James, and Natalia versus Naomi, Becky, and Nikki. I don't give a shit, man. There's, they're good. I know this is a match to highlight each feud here, but it's just going to be when you put them all together. Yeah. It doesn't seem right. Again, it's like a raw match where they incorporate yeah. eight feuds together in one match. I just don't care. Sure, um, it's in an Al- it's, it's in the Alamo Dome. Nikki Bella's team's going to win. They're gonna win. I'm going with Alexa, obviously. Mickey James and Natty. Shit. Why not? Whatever. I don't. I can't argue with you there because I don't care. <laughs> um, move on. So Cesaro and Sheamus uh, versus the Club. The fact that this is on the pre-show is is sad. Yeah. Uh, it's not. There's not going to be a title change here. As much as I want the Club to win a title here, no. Cesaro and Sheamus for the win. Yep. Cesaro and Sheamus are going to retain. And it's in the pre-show. This was probably going to be a quick five six minute match gallows and anderson winning it and then having the decision changed on them was the closest they're getting yeah the <gasps> excuse me uh move on your girl sasha banks oh versus God. nia Jax. why again another feud that we don't care about sasha banks just goes from a great feud in the women's yeah. division for the title and gets put on the fucking pre-show yeah i understand why she's mad i'd be mad yeah. too Someone of her talent should not be on the pre-show. Yeah. Sorry. I, I, I don't care for it either. Um, Against Nia Jax. Great. I'm picking Sasha Banks, even though Nia Jax is probably going to win, which won't make any sense to me, yeah. but whatever. It is what it is. Uh, I'll pick Sasha Banks. <laughs> Just for the, the dark horse pick here. I'll pick Sasha Banks. Sure. I wasn't even going to watch the pre-show, but now i got to watch yeah. the pre-show. Cruiserweight Championship match. Rich Swan versus Neville. Um... Rich Swan versus Neville. I mean, I, I see Neville winning the title. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Neville wins the championship here. I got I Neville. Go with Neville. Sure. I mean, he's been great for the last month and a half that he's come up and yeah. being in the cruiserweight division. I think he's going to be the next guy to run with it. So yeah. I think Swan's had a good run, but I think Neville's going to dethrone him here. Uh, 
Women's Championship, Bailey and Charlotte. I don't think this is where Bailey's going to win the title. No, absolutely Definitely not. not. Still see it being a good match, but Charlotte retains here for sure. And Charlotte I think retaining. Bailey wins maybe at WrestleMania. Yep. Kevin Owens with Roman Reigns. Like, oh, so fuck it. I don't want to pick Roman Reigns. I don't because I fucking hate Roman Reigns. But he's winning the title here, ladies and gentlemen. I, as much as I don't want to say it, he's going to take the title away from Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens is going to do some stupid and blame Jericho for it, like distracting him from the top of the cage or something. It might lead to their match. Yeah, and that's like going to Jericho lead, in yeah. the shark cage. It's yeah. going to happen. And Jericho versus Owens for the U.S. title at WrestleMania. No Man Gains is going over no as the Man Universal Gaines Champion. Get, and hopefully... Yeah. Hopefully the crowd doesn't revolt before the Royal Rumble match yeah. even starts. So I really hope this is before the next match. We're about to talk about Styles and Cena because I don't care about Roman Reigns. And I hope it doesn't kill the kill the Royal Rumble match kill itself. Kill the vibe, yeah. yeah. Um, AJ Styles against Cena. Going to be a really good match again. There's two ways it can go here again. Cena could win the title and have a championship match at WrestleMania. Or Styles could keep it. But I think Styles is going to keep yep. it here. But if, do, if Cena does win it, it will be at Elimination Chamber in two weeks. I, if he does. Yeah. I see Styles retaining. But... Then again, WWE wanting John Cena to tie Ric Flair's record being yeah. at a big stage like the Alamo Dome, yeah. or they might wait till WrestleMania. I'm going to pick Styles to retain, though. Yeah. It should be a good match. Whether it be the same type and as good as a match at Summer... Since, uh, f- God, Summer I can't even talk right now. Uh, like their match of the year at SummerSlam of last year. We'll see. And their WrestleMania plans have changed with these guys yeah. so many so times. Many times Maybe we'll see it weeks. again at WrestleMania. I don't know, but yeah. who knows with that. But I'm picking Styles for, to retain. And on to the main event... Our picks. I'm still going with it. Sami Zayn, the dark horse of the match. I'm picking Sami Zayn to win the Royal Rumble match and incorporate a feud with Roman Reigns, whether it be a triple threat or whatever. I don't care. But don't get me wrong, ladies and gentlemen. I will not be surprised at all if a surprise pick wins the Royal Rumble here, and I'm talking about Samoa Joe. I think Samo- if Samoa Joe here and he has a chance to win it, I think Samoa Joe is going to win it and challenge John Cena for the WWE Championship at WrestleMania. You don't think it's going to be a Raw guy that wins nope. it? Nope. I seriously do not think so. I think they're just going to feud Roman Reigns with somebody. They probably haven't figured it out yet, but I think I'm picking Sami Zayn for the Raw guy, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if Samoa Joe wins it. But I'm my number one pick is Sami Zayn. Well, I've picked Sami Zayn since August, so I'm going to have to stick with him. But <laughs> I think it would be funny if Braun Strowman won. <laughs> <laughs> of course. and That's not a bad pick. He could be the guy, man. Vince loves the guy. He's the future of the wrestling. The savior of wrestling. So you know what? I might pick Braun Roman. Roman. I might pick Roman Reigns for the Rumble. <laughs> he jumps in. <laughs> <laughs> Even winning the Universal title, no one's facing me. Because uh, I'm the guy. And I'm He's going to have guy. both titles, you know? <laughs> He's going to have both. Can you imagine? <laughs> Cena Roman and Reigns. St- C- Ro- Reigns and Cena win here. Both at the championship and have a fucking match at WrestleMania. Are you fucking kidding me? Hey, if that the guy happens, passing the torch on to the new face oh of Oh my throats. god, I would lose it, but I would not. Again, I'm not surprised if Vince did that. I'd be like, oh, it's typical Vince McMahon, Roman right Reign, there. Uh, Roman Reigns loses oh, loses god. to Kevin Owens in the Universal Title match, and yeah. then they stick him in the Rumble. And he wins. Unfucking believable, <laughs> man. Uh, surprise, Just... surprise entrance. I'm going with Kurt Angle. Yeah. I'd pick Kurt Angle, too. Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe. Finn Ty Balor. Dillinger, but t- Ty Dillinger is not in the fucking number if 10. If he's not entrance. number 10, I don't want him in the Rumble. I don't <laughs> want him in the Rumble if he's not number 10. I don't care. Just stay away from the Rumble if you're if not number 10. If he comes out at number 10, it is going to be the biggest pop we've heard in a while. Yeah. Um, it's going to be so. Kurt Angle, Samoa Joe, Ty Dillinger, and Finn Balor. That's you it. You think Balor's coming back yep. already? Yeah. Mm. I honestly, he had testing this week and he looked really, really good. So I think he's good. I think he makes an appearance at the Rumble, like he's in it, but he doesn't have a really big physical role. The way he gets eliminated is going to be a little, you know, something that he doesn't hurt himself too bad. And he's going to be one of those like people in the corner that's down for a while. You know, you know what I mean? Something to not intense his injury, and then he won't have a match until WrestleMania after. Yeah, like he'll distract somebody. Yeah, cost them. Yeah. Cost them their spot. Yeah. If he if he does appear at the Rumble, that's my guess. Comic relief, fourth one. I'm picking Jonathan Coachman. Why not? <laughs> Comic relief. Fuck. I'm picking Shaquille O'Neal to come out and eliminate Big Show. <laughs> that's what I'm picking. And set up their match. Yeah. Great. Set up their WrestleMania match. All right. And your panda, it. panda, panda, panda this yep. Sunday. Get, you heard it here first, guys. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, guys, that's gonna wrap it up for this week, and that is week number forty-two of the Lowdown Show on Brand Wars on the Holtz Bard Wrestling Podcast. You can call it Brand Wars, and we're the Lowdown Show. We're your Canadian-based WWE podcast reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw, 
our Monday Night Snooze Fest, and Tuesday Night Smackdown, the A-Show, from the past week. Also, during the show, we have our Twitter post segment called the Luke Gallows Post. It doesn't exist anymore because I'm reading the wrong script. That's all right. And we got our... <coughs> Whoa, excuse me. <laughs> excuse me, God. I'm botching like Dana Botch. At WWE Headlines, we're talking about any important news in WWE. Hopefully, to return next week, as well as our new segment. We'll try to get that in for you guys. Remember, every week, the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live on Spreaker at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP. As you can see, it's live. I just coughed right on the air, and we're not editing that out. <laughs> we're live. Yeah. If you'd like to join the conversation, have your thoughts and questions read in the podcast, tweet us at No Holds Bar WP. Follow us on YouTube, and drop a comment on YouTube if you want, guys. Just follow us, man. You can join bell the it. conversation. People, people have, subs haven't been working lately. Make yeah. sure you bell us. Yeah. <laughs> Hit that bell besides subscribe. Yeah. Bell. Yeah. Uh, anyways, guys, yeah, share share the podcast. Everybody. Get get the word out there, man. We, we appreciate the love. Maybe you win Twitter Fan of the Year. Yeah. You never know. Who knows? I'm your host, though. The self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, and always ever Every week, continue to be joined by my co-host, the glorious boss. The glorious. Glorious. The blissful boss. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Corporate himself. Corporate cash. Enjoy the corporate rumble this weekend. Yep. Guys, we're, the corporate rumble. And as always, we're here reminding you to keep it on the lowdown.